So this is the lower six component three in class question book. Now question one starts off with the gas exchange. And so we can see a human insect respiratory systems. It's everything you'd expect to see there. Uh, the insect one, pretty, pretty straightforward. The bits on here that you might not recognize totally. So you've got the, the lung with the alveolus there and alveoli plural. And then you've got an inner plural membrane there. And then you've got, I'll do this in a, a different color, an outer plural membrane there with a gap in between. And so we've got the ribs that will move due to the muscles attached to the intercostal muscles and then they'll, they'll only affect this outer pleural membrane really. Okay, um, but it starts off with a, a simple table explaining the purposes of these features. You should be thinking of your gas exchange notes and properties of gas exchange surfaces. Um, why, why are these internal? Um, well, to reduce, these are moist surfaces and if they're on the outside they dry out and you'd lose a lot of water and you'd also lose a lot of, lot of heat. So they will reduce water loss, or you could say also heat loss. But they are to reduce it, they won't be able to stop it. So you can only say reduce, and they won't give you the mark for prevents or stops. A nasal cavity and the atrial cavity have hairs, so we've got hairs in, in, in your nose, hairs here, you can't really, can't really see them. But they are to trap trap things, uh, so to filter the air, trap dirt or dust particles. Not really bacteria or viruses, they're, they're too small and they'll, they'll get through, but to trap you know, something a bit larger, so to filter the air or you know, trap particles or dirt or something. The walls of the alveoli and tracheals are one cell thick, so this is the uh, properties of exchange surfaces. So the walls of the alveoli there, and tracheals right at the end. Very thin, and that's just to create a short diffusion distance. Short diffusion path for respiratory gases. And alveoli and tracheals are lined with a surfactant this is towards the end of the end of the notes so a very technical word surfactant what that does is um, it reduces the surface tension of the liquid on the moist surface and stops the the alveoli from you know, the walls uh, collapsing and sticking you know together so you've got an uh, alveolus there these two very thin walls would love to uh, stick together in the middle um, become very flat that prevents that from happening so reduces surface tension prevents uh, sticking together of the alveolar wall and the, the tracheal wall. Then we've got a cross section through the trachea and the esophagus. So the esophagus, you might not have done nutrition yet, uh, that's for food and trachea is for air. And you can see, see the cartilage on this diagram. You can see it doesn't extend all the way 
all the way around. There's a gap there. And that looks like quite a small lumen, small hole for the, the food to go through. And the rings of chitin on insects track here are complete. So these rings here are complete, complete circles, whereas this has a gap. Use the information in the photo micrograph. So use the information, which means you've got to talk about this esophagus. Use the information. So what will happen is you get some food, food in here, and this will expand as the bolus of food, and it'll actually put pressure onto this trachea. So just when you're swallowing the food, this trachea will uh, squeeze slightly. Um, so it's to allow food to go, food to go down. Uh, but of course you don't want that to be permanent and you want this to you know, spring back open as soon as the food passes by. So it allows the trachea to collapse slightly. To collapse slightly when food passes down the esophagus. Alternative, you know, to allow peristalsis or for this increased size of esophagus caused by the passage of food. Words to that effect. Now in one plant tissue that shows a similar pattern of support to the insect's trachea. So we're looking for a plant tissue that has, you know, rings of strengthening round. Well, the plant tissue, um, it says name, so the answer is just xylem. But the evidence would be, well, it hasn't got rings of chitin, it's, it's lignified, it's got rings of lignin around there. And you do that in plant transport. But you should remember that from uh, GCSE. Or you'd be guessing, you know, xylem or phloem, so just guess the right one. Over the page we've got a graph showing pressure and volume changes during a single ventilation. I'm just going to move this over here. Right, what does this graph show? So the zero is zero difference in pressure. Anything below zero is kind of like a sucky kind of pressure, whereas anything above zero is a kind of blowy kind of pressure. You can think of it in the, those ways. So we can see both pressures in the alveolus, so that's inside here and the pleural pressure, that's inside here. So that's a pleural cavity. So the pressure's in two different, two different areas. This question wants during inspiration. One of the most common areas on this is to talk about expiration as well. But just during inspiration, let's see what happens. So it tells us the external intercostal muscles contract, raising the rib cage. Don't put that in your answers, it's told you that. So we have got these muscles contracting, and this is raising the rib cage. So what happens next? That pulls on our outer pleural membrane. So that's right pressed up against the, the rib cage. So when we move this rib cage up and out, then uh, the volume of the pleural cavity increases, the pressure goes down and that outer pleural membrane you know, is, is moved. And the effect then is that because this pressure is lower in the pleural cavity than this inner, the inner pleural 
membrane is also kind of pulled out to a larger volume and then this will reduce the pressure inside this alveolar um, air. So on our graph we can see the external intercostals contract, rib cage moves up and out and our pleural pressure goes down there, so that's our pleural pressures going down. So that makes sense and this is just during inspiration so inspiration we're talking about between there and there this is a bit a bit strange we've got our alveolar pressure going down well you might expect that so if you make this volume bigger the pressure is going down but what's going to happen you're going to get air moving in uh, and you're going to get air moving in through the nose and mouth and as air moves in this pressure is going to be equalized in the alveoli so eventually there won't be a pressure difference and you're, and you're ready to breathe out again so actually this starts to rise as air comes in then the pressure difference is less and less and that's quite a complicated concept and so and then we're going to stop talking now because the rest of it is an expiration and we don't want that. So let me summarise that on the, on the marks. So expanding the rib cage. That lowers the pressure in the, the pleural cavity. It pulls on that outer pleural membrane. So pulls on the outer pleural membrane. And it's not really a mark for that, I'm, I'm really kind of repeating the question. Um, but what does this do for the mark? It lowers that pleural pressure. So that lowers pleural pressure. So that is explaining this part of the this part of the curve. The second mark is saying well what happens to the inner pleural membrane now? So the inner pleural membrane kind of pulls on those lungs. The inner pleural membrane pulls on the lungs. It's not a you know really attached with any you know great it's not glued on or part of it but it just pulls on that because of the pressures really it's all, all relying on pressure what happens then this increases the volume of the lungs and this increases the volume of the lungs and you probably would have said that if you're talking about breathing in you say the volume of the lungs increases um, or you could say their alveoli or thorax this decreases the pressure and then we're talking that's this bit here we're talking about so this decreases the pressure you know in the alveoli and why does air move in uh, pressure and volume changes so air now this makes air move in so this is below atmospheric pressure so air moves in or you could have said you know the negative pressure so air, air will air will move and that's actually why this this top alveolar pressure then goes up 
So we've explained the causes of the pressure and the volume changes shown and only during inspiration. So quite a tricky four marks those. And then the last uh, last one mark, they must have needed it to add up to something, suggests one change you'd expect to see in these curves during strenuous exercise. Uh, not really on the spec much. Um, but what you know, you know what happens when you when you do a lot of running. We'll have you know faster things happening faster or more really. So uh, the most obvious thing to say would be you know faster inspirations and expirations, more rapid breathing, more rapid breathing. You could have deeper breaths, so bigger volumes, so bigger volume changes. That's actually answering the question because it's saying how would they, how would these curves change? You know, bigger pressure changes possibly, faster pressure changes, faster pressure changes. Anything sensible, sensible there to, to get them out.